Hello, and welcome to the Coppell Independent School District's virtual graduation. Today we celebrate our two high schools, New Tech High at Coppell and Coppell High School. In addition to this virtual graduation, we will also be hosting an in-person ceremony. There's specific information about this event, which we would like all of our parents and seniors and family members to know about. So please make sure that you check this information out carefully as we wanna make sure that when we celebrate our graduates in person, that we do follow all the safety protocols and expectations of the venue. But please sit back and enjoy our virtual graduation as we celebrate the amazing class of 2020. Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 Commencement Ceremony for New Tech High at Coppell. Today, we are celebrating the accomplishments of our learners, but we also want to say thank you to those who have supported and encouraged them throughout the years. I hope everyone watching will join me in sharing our deepest wishes for the seniors honored here tonight to enjoy their success as they boldly take their next steps. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, I am proud to welcome and celebrate the New Tech High at Coppell Class of 2020. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please help me welcome Eagle Scout Kurt Carpenter. Following the pledge, Hillary Nguyen, our president of the Model UN, will give our welcome. Please stand for the American Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello everyone, facilitators, parents, friends, and our graduates of New Tech Class of 2020. It is my greatest pleasure to welcome you all to the 2020 virtual graduation ceremony of New Tech High at Capel. I would like to start by thanking all of the facilitators and staff of NewTech for working so hard to ensure that every single learner of the class of 2020 still has the chance to celebrate their achievements throughout the past four years, even with the difficulty of social distancing. In fact, this is what made NewTech so great. It is that special bond that we share between facilitators and learners that truly made NewTech like a second home to us. The casual last name basis, the fun memories of Wonderful Wednesday, the laughter that we share during our networking together, our silly annual end of the year talent show, and more. What we have as a school and a community is truly unique. As we prepare to embark on a new exciting chapter of our lives, there's no doubt about the massive impact New Tech has had on shaping us as individuals. We were challenged, living, and emboldened as learners. With the preparation we had at New Tech, I'm confident to say that every single one of us will make a lasting impact on our future endeavors. Class of 2020, although we cannot be physically together during this challenging time, I hope that this virtual ceremony will serve as a reminder to every single one of you that you're loved and that you are destined to thrive on your own unique path. Today is a time to acknowledge and celebrate us, our achievements, our challenges, and most importantly, our memories together. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. New Tech Hyatt Coppell is proud to be represented by these graduates today. They embody the cornerstone values of citizenship at our school, trust, respect, and responsibility. They have committed themselves to nurturing relationships with both faculty and peers, as they have also embraced the spirit of giving back. Whether through holding community events for charity, volunteering in the neighborhood and in other schools, or creating presentations that help to show others why they should look beyond themselves, New Tech Hyatt Coppell graduates have imagined and helped to create a better world. Today, you leave with a little piece of our hearts, hopefully a lot of our guidance, and the commission to continue the work that you began here. Seniors, normally at this point in this graduation script, I offer a word that sums up the senior class. 
Of course, the class of 2020 is a special one and going through some pretty unique circumstances. So you get not one word, but two. My first word for you this year is survivor. You're a group of learners who has survived three different high school bell schedules. You started on mods, then went to modified block, then a straight alternating block with flex days. You also survived getting recruited by one administrative team only to walk in the door at rookie camp with another administrative team. You're also the group that survived double block Greenwald. Okay, maybe that wasn't a survival moment. Doesn't everyone want double blocked Greenwald? Survival isn't enough of a word for your class though. You've also thrived. And that's my second word for you. You showed that you could thrive when you got the lead in the musical, became DECA State president, won the Excellence Award for Leadership and Preparation at a major Model UN competition, made All-State Band, signed to continue your tennis or wrestling career in college, and so much more. You will go on to do great things, and we are all so honored that we got to be beside you for that part of your journey. Graduations, of course, are about more than just the learners and their accomplishments. They're also about the people who have helped them reach this day. Choosing New Tech High at Coppell is more than an individual learner commitment. It's also a commitment made by a family. Parents, thank you for your support throughout these last four years and for giving us this time with your children. Learners, please help me in thanking your parents. Coppell ISD is fortunate to have a community that consistently supports and dedicates itself to the enrichment of our seniors. We are especially fortunate to have school board members who volunteer countless hours for the sole purpose of supporting our educators and learners. While you will not see them on this broadcast, they are at home cheering you on today. Secretary, Ms. Nicole Bentley. Vice President, Mr. David Cavanis. Trustee, Ms. Tracy Fisher. Trustee, Mr. Anthony Hill. President, Mr. Tom Holm. Trustee, Manish Sethi, and Trustee Lee Walker. Likewise, I would like to acknowledge the support and leadership of our central office staff. Our superintendent, Dr. Brad Hunt. Assistant superintendent, Ms. Kristen Streeter. Assistant superintendent, Dr. Angie Applegate. And our chief financial officer, Ms. Diana Sirkar. Our keynote speaker was chosen by the senior class of 2020. Mr. Uglow had the distinct honor of serving as the class of 2020's junior English facilitator and has also been shepherding some of them through the capstone process. Please welcome Mr. Uglow. Greetings class of 2020. You finally made it to the last stop on the journey of adolescence. Today you disembark from compulsory education and tomorrow you embark on the first steps into adulthood. The next journey that you take will lead you to places that you never thought you would go, give you things that you never thought you would want, and take from you many things that you never thought could be taken. Indeed, the next phase of your life will be the most exciting, perplexing, costly, and rewarding phase you'll see. For many of you, this has been a season of mixed emotion. Perhaps you've felt exhausted from the years you've spent day in and day out in classes. You might just, have strong, just as strongly have felt the ecstasy of excitement for the days ahead of you when you'll finally get to call all the shots for yourself. If you're anything like I was at your age, the excitement and exhaustion have both been tempered by a measure of apprehension as you wonder what exactly lies ahead for you in the days to come. These are all appropriate responses to this landmark in your life, I assure you. And they probably will continue with you in each successive step that you take from here on out. It often seems that along with every victory inevitably comes the question, what's next? As anyone who's lived for very long will tell you, there's no sure answer to that question. Try though we might to read our futures, those cards are only revealed with time. And yet we can look forward to the future, regardless of what lies ahead, as a time of success. I wish that I could give you a roadmap for the journey ahead, but any attempt on my part would fall far short 
of being useful to you. So instead, I'd like to talk to you about one way to think about your future. Whenever we look toward the future, we often try to imagine what the ideal outcomes might be for our lives. We daydream about how great these outcomes might be, but we rarely take time to think about the way that these outcomes might actually occur. Indeed, the way that we imagine the future will go is hardly ever how it actually turns out. I would argue that success is, in its purest form, weird. Don't worry, I'll explain. Before I give my explanation, I think it would be best for us to set a baseline for definitions for our terms. Take a couple of moments to think about your future. Visualize for yourself what a successful life would look like for you 10 years down the road. When visualizing a successful future, many of you probably saw a number of ideal outcomes. Perhaps you saw yourself doing something that you love for a living. Maybe you saw a life in which you had everything that you had ever dreamed of owning. Or perhaps a successful future to you was simply a happy future with people that you love. Whatever the case, I can guess with relative certainty that your vision of success did not include any negative circumstances. For American culture in general, the ideal of success is almost always defined by positive outcomes. Material wealth, loving relationships, freedom, and prosperity, all of these are linked closely to the word success, but this was not always the case. The term success comes to us from the Latin word successus, which itself comes from the words sub, meaning after, and the word cede, meaning to come. To the Latins, the term successus did not necessarily mean anything positive, but instead literally only meant what comes after. Why does this matter to us today? It matters for a number of reasons. If you were to ask 10 successful people how they got to where they are, most if not all of them would tell you that their journey to their positive goals was indirect and filled with unforeseen difficulties and consequences. Indeed, very few of us who feel that we are succeeding in life would tell you that we knew ahead of time exactly where our futures were going. Many more would say that the outcomes they arrived at were not the outcomes that they had worked so hard to achieve. You've probably experienced something similar in your journey toward adulthood. How many times have you studied very hard for a test or a quiz only to receive a disappointing grade? Adversely, how many times have you tried at all or not tried at all and passed with flying colors. If these experiences teach us nothing else, they might show us that ultimately the outcomes of our efforts are sometimes just a roll of the dice. If we keep in mind that in the original sense of the word, success only meant what comes after, we can take some solace in knowing that whatever happens, whether failure or victory, in the strictest sense, it is a success. So why then do I say that success is weird? For this, we turn to another word that means something very different from its original meaning, namely the word weird. Weird comes to us from the old English word, weird, which simply meant fate. To us today, the word means something closer to strange, and for that, you can thank Shakespeare's play, Macbeth. The original senses of both success and weird convey to us an idea of a lack of control over our future. In modern times, I think it is more important than ever for us to take this into consideration. The poem Invictus by William Ernest Hentley concludes with the lines, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Within our culture, this sentiment is often echoed you control your future. You control your destiny. When we consider these things logically, however, we quickly see how irrational this thought is. If by sheer force of will we were able to cause all of our dreams to occur exactly as we desired them, then the world would be completely perfect, at least for us. This simply isn't the case in reality. Indeed, none of us chose to be alive at this specific time in these specific bodies with all of their specific shortcomings, nor can we, by mere force of will, change things. 
It's a sobering and perhaps terrifying thought. The unfortunate truth is that regardless of what we want, what we hope for, or sometimes what we do, the outcomes that occur are beyond our control. So what can we do? My answer to this is simply try. You may not be able to achieve all of the goals that you set, your, uh, set out for yourself. You might fail in many of your attempts along the way. You might not ever attain that ideal of success that you thought of at the beginning of this. Or you might. There's no way to tell. Regardless of the outcomes that you face, positive or negative, what you can do is try. If you achieve, keep trying. If you fail, keep trying. If nothing happens at all, keep trying. Few people who play games always win, but I've never heard of someone winning who never played at all. The Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said that whatever happens at all happens as it should. While you may not agree with this sentiment, we can certainly say that the outcomes that occur in life are strictly only good or bad. There's an old Taoist story about a farmer and a horse which illustrates this well. The story goes that once there was a farmer whose horse escaped and ran away. When his neighbor saw that the farmer's horse had run away, he said to the farmer, what a terrible thing to happen. I know that horse was the only thing you owned. I'm so sorry that it's gone. The farmer in reply only said, who knows what's good and what's bad. The next day, the horse returned to the farm with 12 other wild horses from the countryside. Seeing this, the neighbor came across the field and joyfully exclaimed, what good luck. You have more now than any of this. But the farmer simply replied, who knows what's good and what's bad. The next day, the farmer's son was out training one of the wild horses, and the horse kicked him, breaking his leg. The neighbor saw this, rushed to the farmer's side, and said, how awful. Your poor son is hurt. The farmer again replied, who knows what's good and what's bad. The next day, the farmer awoke to see an army in his field. A commander from the army came looking for able-bodied youths to go and fight in the war. Seeing that the farmer's son had broken his leg, he left the boy behind. When the soldiers were gone, the neighbor came again and said, you must think that this is good. Your son's been saved from going to war. But the farmer only replied, who knows what's good and what's bad. The story could continue for forever, back and forth, but the main idea is this. We cannot always take the outcomes that occur as being wholly good or wholly bad. In many cases, the things that seem like great disappointments often work out to be better than imagined. In the coming years, you will face a number of failures and a number of victories. Some of these you may work for. Some of these may just happen. When you win or when you lose, it may help to keep in mind that you weren't fully responsible for the outcome and that it isn't all good or all bad. And now your road lies ahead of you. There will be many choices that you make along the way and many things that will happen regardless of what you choose. In school, as in the real world, the only thing that you can do is try. Whatever comes after is just weird. Thank you, Mr. Uglo. I have truly enjoyed getting to know this year's valedictorian and salutatorian since my time at New Tech. They each have pursued academic excellence while also finding other arenas to shine. At this time, I invite Shruti Iyer to the podium to deliver the salutatory address. Hello, friends, family, facilitators, and fellow graduates. My name is Shruti Iyer, and it is my honor to be here today as we, the class of 2020, complete this tremendous milestone in our lives. First and foremost, I would like to thank my family, who have always encouraged me and showered me with love unconditionally. Thank you for always being there. I love you guys so much. Thank you to the amazing facilitators who have made New Tech the wonderful place that it is. Thank you for challenging us and for truly caring. 
Thank you for your willingness to lend an ear, share your wisdom, and support all us learners even when we don't make it easy for you. Thank you to all my friends who never fail to make me smile and have helped me make some of the best memories I have of high school. And last but not least, thank you to the graduating class of 2020 for being there through the past four years to share in this journey. We've made it through the ups and downs, and now together we close this chapter of our lives and look to the future. We started high school four years ago in a place unlike regular schools. At New Tech, we were not signing up for the typical high school experience, but so much more. From the first week of school, we were already going against the norm. We had no classes, and instead we were just getting a feel for what the next four years of our lives would look like. Back then, we didn't even know what we needed to know. During that first week, we made time capsules filled with representations of who we were and wrote letters to our future selves about what we hoped for in high school. At the time, I didn't know what was in store for me at New Tech. I was excited to be in a new environment and have more freedom, but I had no idea how great a choice coming to New Tech would be for me. I have loved being a part of the unique culture and learning environment of New Tech. It has allowed me to step out of my shell and become a leader. It has given me the resources I need to succeed in college and in the real world, but most importantly, it has created a culture that I am proud to be a part of. Our small school truly is like a second family. Like me, I'm sure many of you are completely different people now than you were during first week projects. And no matter what it was that you hoped for high school, this strange turn of events was probably not a part of it. You probably weren't hoping to be watching your graduation right now from the comfort of your living room. But we put in the hard work for 12 long years, and though it may not be how we imagined it, we did it. We made it through. As unbelievable as it may seem, we're graduating. As the class of 2020, we had our senior year cut short. And though it may be easy to focus on Though it may be easy to feel discouraged and fixate on all the things we have missed out on or all the time we lost, let us relish in all the things we did have. All the moments that are uniquely ours, that nothing can ever take away from us. Let's take a moment to remember the friendships we made, the lessons we learned, and the fun we had. From the late nights spent working on slam poems and trebuchets to the wonderful and fabulous days of the week we shouted until we lost our voices. Marking our height on what little wall space we could find, and that familiar cringe anytime someone mentions being in their element. Solving disputes with a round of rock, paper, scissors, and jumping rope out on our playground. Walking through the halls and hearing the familiar tune of, are you wearing your trust cards? It is these moments and all the memories made in between that we as new tech learners will hold dear for the rest of our lives. And here and now, we are making one last memory together before we go out into the world. As we leave the comfort of this place we have known for the last four years, I want to share my hopes for the future. I hope we each continue to learn and grow, discover more about ourselves, and work hard to achieve our goals. I hope we continue to maintain the important norms of trust, respect, and responsibility. I hope that wherever we all go from here, we continue to leave our mark. Our years at New Tech have shaped us into the people we are today and given us so much to hold on to. As we come to the end of our journey here, it is time for each of us to take on new challenges. But I have faith that each and every one of you are prepared for this moment. You have the skills you need to succeed. So congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. Thank you. Thank you, Shruti. The New Tech Hyatt Coppell Class of 2020 Valedictorian is Grace Kotak. Please help me welcome Grace Kotak to the podium for the valedictory address. Good evening, friends, family, New Tech Hyatt Coppell staff, honored guests, and graduates. My name is Grace Kotak, and I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the Class of 2020 and our journey through New Tech these past four years. On behalf of the class of 2020, I'd like to take a moment to extend some gratitude to the people and organizations that have supported us throughout our high school journey. To the parents, gardens, family and community members of New Tech grads. 
You've been a steadfast source of love and encouragement through all of the ups and downs. Thank you. To the staff, facilitators, and administration at New Tech, your commitment to see each and every person that comes through our doors grow and thrive as students and people is something we will appreciate for the rest of our lives. Thank you. To the clubs and organizations that have become like extended families, you empowered us to realize and pursue our passions and are such a significant part of who we are. Thank you. To you, the class of 2020, from global issues to double blocked English and a less than ideal end to our senior year, we toughed the storm together and made it. Thank you. Lastly, and on a more personal note, thank you to my mom and dad, five incredible siblings, friends, work family, and golden retriever Ella. I love you all. Now, if you had told me three months ago that I'd be watching my graduation on a computer screen, I might have laughed in your face. It certainly isn't every day that a global pandemic keeps us restricted to our homes. Although this is not what we envisioned, I'd like to take a moment to highlight some of the positives here. One, forgot to order your cap and gown? No problem. Don't feel like putting on pants? We've got you covered. No other class will be able to say that they didn't have to get dressed for the graduation ceremony. You could be wearing pajamas right now, for all we know. Two, you can't trip walking across the stage. This was a very big worry for me. Three, if my speech is boring, which I genuinely hope it isn't, you can just put me on mute. Please don't though, I'll try to keep it upbeat. Lastly, and on a more serious note, this is a moment we will never forget, regardless of how we experience it. I've gotta say, I'm somewhat relieved that this isn't a live speech. If I mess up, no one will know except for the kind person behind the camera. That being said, a virtual graduation isn't the first unique marker of our high school experience. Our one-of-a-kind journey through high school started four years ago when we made the decision to attend a small, project-based learning school where teachers are called facilitators, the sight of flying pumpkins isn't unusual, and trust is worn around the neck. I'll never forget the first time I tried to explain Olympics or a snacker challenge to my parents. I distinctly remember my mom asking, Grace, what are you doing with all that face paint one morning my freshman year? What we have here is hard to describe, and to understand new tech, you really have to experience it. When figuring out what I wanted to say tonight, I was given the advice, honor what was unique about your class and the collective experience you shared. One of the things I appreciate most about us and the school culture we were provided is the way in which we embraced our own individualities and celebrated those of each other. Coming into high school and entering a fully collaborative environment is daunting, but it was in this setting that we really got to come into our own, get to know each other, and take ourselves out of our comfort zones. Our high school experience wasn't normal. How could it be when we wore togas one day and business suits the next? Every decision, achievement, and complexity has been completely unique to us as New Tech's class of 2020. But it is within the abnormal, the strange, the uncomfortable, that we will continue to grow and succeed. This isn't to say that the tough choices we've made along the way have been easy. The abnormal is scary, and the next stage of our lives is filled with uncertainty. And to be completely honest, I'm scared. Sometimes I feel like I've worked so hard to get to this moment that I didn't stop to think about what it would mean when I finally got here. We don't truly know how things will unfold, but in the same breath, I do not question our ability to succeed because we really know what it means to adapt and keep moving forward. If no one's told you yet, you've got this. Things are confusing now, but they won't always be. You have permission today to be exactly and fully who you are. With that, I congratulate you, class of 2020, and say goodbye. We will each take a different path, but will be forever connected by the host of experiences, memories, and adventures we shared. Plus, we'll always know who to call when it's someone's birthday. I'm talking about you, Jahari. I'm so grateful that each of us took that leap of faith a little over four years ago. Just look at where it's brought us. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Kennington and I'm the counselor for New Tech High at Capel. It has been my honor and privilege to get to know and work with the class of 2020. As we begin the presentation of the candidates of the class of 2020, we would like to recognize those that have participated in service and honor organizations. National Honor Society members are recognized by gold cords. National Honor Society officers are recognized by gold and blue cords. Spanish Honor Society members are recognized by gold and red cords. Yearbook members are recognized by teal cords. 
Fuse members are recognized by gray cords. DECA members are recognized by the light blue and white cords. Members of the Learner Leadership Council are recognized by purple cords. Members of the networking team captains are recognized by green cords. Finally, learners ranking in the top 10% of their class are recognized by the red honor sashes. Congratulations, class of 2020. Class of 2020, please stand. Dr. Hunt and CISD Board of Trustees, it is my honor to present to you the New Tech Hyatt Coppell Class of 2020 as candidates for graduation. In addition to meeting state requirements for graduation, our graduates completed additional requirements to earn the distinction of being a New Tech Hyatt Coppell graduate. Their work includes hours of community service, completion of capstone, and job exploration opportunities. Thank you, Mrs. Baddock. It is my honor on behalf of the Coppell ISD Board of Trustees to receive these learners of the class of 2020 as candidates for graduation. We are so very proud of the class of 2020. Our seniors this year have done an amazing job, and even though the circumstances might look a little bit different, we don't want to devalue the incredible accomplishments of the class of 2020. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the Texas Education Agency and the Coppell Independent School District Board of Trustees, I certify these candidates as graduates for New Tech High at Coppell with all the rights, privileges, and honors this diploma signifies. Learners, you can sit now. I now invite Ms. Rahila Sheikh, Assistant Principal of New Tech High at Coppell to the podium to announce the graduates. And now the senior class of 2020, beginning with the top 10%. Grace Lisa Kotak. Shruti Iyer. Taylor Nicole Peltier. Liana Dona Karkaby. Sayed Hassan Raza. Yash Sanjeev Bagar. Sakira Martel Castle. Michael Badio. Brendan Michael Beamer. Yash Abhe Posle. Julia Lee Breidenbach. William Brooks Brown. Madison Elizabeth Caleb. Kurt Garrett Carpenter. Emily Reese Chilton. Paul Nicholas Chinnam. Cosette Savanna Chiv. Rishi Chowdhury. Mason Campbell Clark. Davis Wayne Dodd. Trinity Lee Fisher. Maria Carmen Fleming. Karen Itzel Rivera. Caroline Helm. Brandon Ross Henneberg. Kamil Ali Juwani. Jahari Karthikian. 
Riley Breanne Kennedy. Toria Jean Knowlton. Andrique Salvador Martinez. Brooke Danielle Mossabile. Ryan Joseph McCord. Marley Takara Mo. Maxwell Murphy. Win Pham Dong Win. Patrick Thomas Osegian. Mackay David Pace. Leah Elizabeth Patrick. Raja Chandra Pradhan. Anna Maria Nicolina Radicic. Caroline Grace Richardson. Isabel Perry Robinson. Mallory Elizabeth Robinson. Patrick Sean Robinson. Brett David Roth. Cesar Alejandro Payne. Sofia Sanchez Rosales. Joao Victor Lengruber Silva. Chloe Geyer Spellacy. Brooke Katerina Stokes. Connor James Tipton. Chloe Isabella Torres. Jacob Lee Trent. Monica Bellamori. Savannah Darlene Walker. Catherine Louise White. Logan Vance White. Janae Lee Wilson. Christopher Albert Wines. Lee Michael Wright Doe. Bailey K. Yates. Emily Eileen Yao. I would now like to invite Cosette Shiv to the podium as the author of the senior poem. High school, alone, nervous, powerless. We challenged tradition and lost it, but not all was lost. Togas, trebuchets, late nights and early days. Olympics, snacker challenge, new tech kids will understand. Not all was lost. We've learned in more ways than one. Isolation cannot stop us. Responsibility, trust, every poem we discussed. How to finish things the night before. Isolation cannot stop us. We're powerless, unable to solve this pandemic, but we will overcome it. Six feet apart, Zoom calls, unopened time capsules, empty halls. We feel more lost than ever, 
but we will overcome it. We've grown more than we can recognize now. We've pushed each other and ourselves. Global issues, the few show, the younger classes will never know. There was change every single year. We've pushed each other and ourselves. We feel alone, but we share something great. We are ready. Mods, Pokemon Go, the element, slam poems, four years built on these moments. We are ready. We're walking away, focusing on the next four years, our next forever. Diploma in hand, cap and gown unworn, a lifetime ahead of us. It all started with new tech, our next forever. High school, together, confident, complete. Thank you, Cosette. To share some final words to the class of 2020, Manasa Vela-Murray will join us again as the National Honor Society President. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of this live stream. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Manasa Vela-Murray, and I hope you will all enjoy these next three minutes we will be spending together. Even six feet apart from this camera, I'm gonna try my best to make this as unawkward as I possibly can. I know the notion of graduation is primarily for the satisfaction of our parents, but I've decided to steal this speech for us. We've endured a lot through these four years, whether it was early morning tutorials with Benson Boyd, getting socks thrown at us by Campbell, utilizing our extra time with Greenwald to learn all the possible ins and outs there were to English too, test after test our junior year, or finally getting to senior year and not being able to enjoy our fleeting time as high schoolers, being able to check out of class and not care for the repercussions. After spending months wor working on college applications, we were all so excited to not be able to worry about school anymore being able to spend our last semester getting closure with our favorite facilitators and friends. But here we are today, spending our days in our beds rather than in our classrooms. I think it is important to say that our time together as a class of 2020 will not be remembered by this small shortcoming, but rather for all the reasons why we are the best class to persevere through it. Whether it's the musicians, DECA kids, thespians, water bottle cap flickers, mun kids, gamers, student counselors, artists, or wrestler, I think it's safe to say that we have it all. Before this speech comes to a close, I thought it would be appropriate to take the time to thank, to thank everyone who made our high school experiences what it was. To all the amazing facilitators that have guided us through these incredibly formative four years, I don't think there are enough words in thesaurus.com to let you know how thankful we are for you. Our memories together will be forever cherished. Waving at Mr. Volker every single time I can catch his eye, even if it means standing in the hallway for awkward amounts of times. Pours your talks, wherever and wherever, that really make you think unlike any other class. Baddock singing the trust card song, but us continuously ignoring it because chocolate is greater than candy. Walking down the halls to see Porter, Hussey, Greenwald, Hufford, Smith, Yuglo, Kennington, and an unnecessarily long list of other facilitators who just stand at the end of the hallway during passing period. Like, do we look up or down or be on our phones but get yelled at for it? It's just an all-in-all -all uncomfy situation. To all the unyielding parents, thank you for dealing with us and all of our gross phases. Thank you for letting us know that if you eat a watermelon seed, you will in fact harvest fruit in your stomach. And for letting us know how illegal it is to turn the car light on while you are driving. These lessons were quintessential in order for our success. But finally, to all the seniors of the New Tech class of 2020, I hope from the bottom of my heart that we all pop off in our own respective careers and futures. I have truly enjoyed the four years we've spent together and I hope the best for us all. Thank you. Graduates, please stand. In this moment of presentation in common bond to symbolize the transition from one phase of your life to the next, Please move your tassels from right to left to signify your status as a graduate. To our parents, community, CISD administration, new tech facilitators and special guests, I proudly present to you the graduates of New Tech Hyatt Coppell, class of 2020. Mm -hmm. 